Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. If you're shopping online to score the big deals for Cyber Monday this year, well, coming up, a local expert suggests listening to some of his tips to avoid the scams. And another holiday light display is turned on for the season. We'll tell you what's new this year. The video just doesn't do it justice. It is pretty amazing, though. In a little bit, we get to see what Earth looks like to an astronaut in space. Good evening, I'm Alexis Carpello. Thanks for joining us tonight. Last night, Rockford police blocked off a portion of State Street after a pedestrian was hit by a vehicle. The westbound lanes on East State Street near Rockford University were blocked off for over an hour. Police say the pedestrian is in stable condition, but they haven't said if there's a further investigation into the accident. A record number of people are expected to do their holiday shopping online, which can lead to more consumers falling for scams. Our Michelle Rave spoke with a local expert who gives tips of what to do before you check out. Due in large part to the pandemic, uh, most consumers are expected to do all or at least some, if not all, of their shopping online. As more people are checking out their shopping carts from the comfort of their own home, this year's Cyber Monday is expected to break records, with consumers expected to spend $12.7 billion. But this also means shoppers should be aware of online scammers. Pretty much go across the board, all scams are on the, on the rise. The number of, of scams uh, that have been perpetrated during the pandemic have uh, frankly been astronomical um, and, and somewhat surprising. Dennis Horton, director of the Rockford Regional Better Business Bureau, has some key tips for shoppers. People shopping online aren't paying attention to where the products are coming from. Uh, they are simply excited about getting it and don't know that it's coming from China. And then when it doesn't arrive, we find, uh, they find from us that there's little or nothing that we can do to help them. If a price on an item seems too good to be true, be certain to do your research to make sure the business is legitimate. Beware of where, like I said, where that purchase is coming from and don't be enticed by price, price alone. It will be those drastically produced offers that you will see that will lure you in to being scammed by uh, an unscrupulous retailer if, if they really exist. Also, make sure to pay attention to details of the item listed. You should make it a habit is to read the fine print. Make sure that you have uh, read the fine print, that you uh, are researching the business before you do anything uh, with them. So that you uh, at least have an idea, perhaps, of who you're dealing with. Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Michelle Rave. Families that have been forced into financial hardship during the pandemic may not be able to provide the same aspects as last year. After years of traditions, children might not be able to understand why aspects of the holiday season are different this year. But a pediatric psychologist at Nationwide Children's offers tips on how to talk with children so that they can better understand. He says one way to help kids cope this year is by teaching them young that buying and receiving gifts isn't the only way to celebrate the holidays. You can donate your time or your energy. You can, you know, make cards for your neighbors who might not have as many people visiting them this year. You could bake cookies and deliver them around your neighborhood in a safe way. Make ornaments for people. Nationwide Children's Hospital is planning to release a series of educational videos for parents to help address gift giving and gratitude this holiday season amid the pandemic. As travelers begin to return from Thanksgiving holiday trips, Illinois health officials say over 7,000 residents test positive today. 57 more people have died. That includes two people from the state line. They are from Ogle and Whiteside counties. Over 5,000 people are fighting the virus in hospitals. That includes an increase to 723 patients needing ventilators. The state passes over 720,000 COVID-19 cases and has exceeded 12 thousand deaths total. Illinois' positivity rate is at 12.1 percent. Doctors expect to see a spike in COVID cases following the holiday weekend.
Now taking a look here locally, Region 1's positivity rate is up. Overall, the region has a 15.3% rate, breaking it down by counties. Lee, Ogle, and Stevenson rolling the average did increase. Lee is at 19.6, Ogle at 16.6%. And Stevenson just over 17%. Joe Davies is the lowest in the region with a 9.7 positivity rate. And Boone County did drop, but is the highest with 21.2%. For Tier 3 mitigations to be relaxed, a region has to be lower than a 12% average. But Dr. Fauci doesn't think restrictions will be lessened anytime soon. We may see a surge upon a surge. You know, we don't want to frighten people, but that's just the reality. I cannot see all of a sudden a relaxation of the kinds of recommendations or restrictions because we're getting into colder weather and in an in a even larger holiday season as people travel to come back and forth for Christmas. If you've been exposed or are experiencing COVID symptoms, residents can now register for a test at the UIC community testing site. Health officials say res registering helps decrease wait times. Now that pre registration link is on our website, mystateline.com. Now here's what some Stateline families can expect to change for their students starting tomorrow. Rockford Public Schools, Harlem and Rochelle School Districts will all switch to full remote learning. It's efforts that the schools are taking to prevent the spread of COVID during the holiday season. Other school districts in the Stateline have already switched to all students remote learning. After two weeks remote, Oregon schools plan on returning to to in-person learning Wednesday. Freeport schools will, will resume in-person December 7th. District officials say they're following su suggestions provided by local health departments to help keep students and staff safe. The holiday lights are now on at the Nicholas Conservatory and Gardens. From now until January, January 10th, state line residents can look at the illuminated displays. The layout for this year's outdoor display has changed to a one-way traffic loop, making it easier to distance from others. If you don't feel safe making out to see the lights, the conservatory will have Sounds of the Season performances on their Facebook page. For the complete schedule, head over to mystateline.com. As President-elect Joe Biden moves ahead with his transition, President Trump continues his post-election fight of claiming fraud. Coming up here, Trump's first interview since the election. And our temperatures today made it into the mid and upper 40s. That was before some of that cloud cover moved in, and now we've got a cold front coming through. The impact that will have on our temperatures as we round out the last day of November. Coming up in the forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Alexis Crapfellow, David Greenberg, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. President-elect Joe Biden twisted his ankle while playing with his dog Saturday afternoon. Today, out of caution, he's being examined by an orthopedist. As Biden's team moves forward with his transition, President Trump continues to push his claims of voter fraud, this time in an interview with Fox News. Here's ABC's Rachel Scott with the details. President-elect Joe Biden is expected to announce key members of his economic team this week. Sources telling ABC News former Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen is Biden's choice for Secretary of Treasury. She's brilliant, she's experienced, and she has very broad support. The progressives like her, but so do Wall Street and corporate America, and she has bipartisan support. If confirmed, she would be the first woman to hold that position and would likely play a key role in coronavirus relief negotiations that have stalled. Congress has failed to reach a deal on the next round of relief with unemployment benefits, protections on student loans and moratoriums on evictions all set to expire at the end of the year. The president-elect has already announced some of his nominations for his foreign policy and national security staff. It's a team that reflects the fact that America is back, ready to lead the world, not retreat from it. As the Biden team moves forward with the transition, President Trump continues to push his unfounded claims of widespread voter fraud calling into Fox News for his first interview since losing the election. This election was rigged. This election was a total fraud. Since the election, the president and his allies have had at least 30 of their cases thrown out of court for lack of credible evidence. The latest defeat, Pennsylvania Supreme Court justices unanimously dismissing a Republican lawsuit to toss out more than 2 million mail-in ballots. In a concurring statement, Justice David Wetsch writing, 
They have failed to allege that even a single mail-in ballot was fraudulently cast or counted, noting several of the Republicans who brought the lawsuit participated in primary elections under this system without complaint, adding courts should not decide elections when the will of the voters is clear. That was Rachel Scott reporting. Now here's what Earth looks like to astronauts on board of the SpaceX capsule. The video just doesn't do it justice. It is pretty amazing, though. That view of the Earth is just amazing to see. Victor Glover is part of the Crew-1 mission that launched abroad the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule on November 15th. Glover will be in space for the next six months. Now, your first warm weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. I hope you guys had a wonderful ho holiday weekend. Weather-wise, actually wasn't too bad. Temperatures pretty comfortable. We didn't have any rain or snow, just a little cloud cover from time to time. And that is pretty much how we are going to be here these next several days. The difference, we've got a chill coming up. It's a short-lived one, but will welcome us as we kick off the start to this upcoming week. Let's talk the winds, though, because the winds, they are starting to pick up. You might have already noticed that wind in increasing over the last hour or two. This will last as we go through the night tonight and into the day tomorrow. Then we've got the chill coming in. Cold front came through earlier this afternoon, shifting that wind around to the northwest, and that'll bring those temperatures down. Wind chills tomorrow morning will be down in the teens. Rather quiet week ahead as high pressure provides us with limited opportunity for rain or even snow as we go into the beginning here of December. But let's talk about the wind because it is increasing sustainability winds now anywhere from 15 up to 25 miles per hour have had some gusts to our west behind that front reaching 30 to 35 so it is going to get a little on the windy side as we go through the night tonight and that has brought that temperature down already in the 30s in some spots from 36 degrees in Galena 37 in Monroe feels more like 27 so you see that wind chill factor dropping 38 in Freeport and 42 right now our number in Rockford that's also the same temperature our weather watcher Jim is checking in with us this evening 42 Two and a dew point number of 28. Let's talk wind chill factors because those when you wake up tomorrow morning are going to be down in the teens for most of us. A few outlying areas, especially off to the northwest, could fall into the single digits. So it is going to be a cold one tomorrow and the wind chills during the afternoon. They don't rise much above the mid 20s. So just prepare for a much cooler day tomorrow and we'll have that cloud cover that sticks around as well. More notable though, along with one, the wind and the cooler temperatures, the dry air behind that front. We've got a very dry air mass coming in where our dew point numbers have fallen into the 20s and into the teens back across the upper Midwest and northern plains. So very dry air coming in with high pressure will help limit that rain chance over these next couple of days. A live look with our Mercy Sky Track camera out over downtown Rockford. We are going to continue with that cloudy sky, not only through the night tonight, but into the day tomorrow. We've got two systems kind of working in conjunction, which will bring a pretty large system up along the East Coast these next couple of days. Large area low pressure down to the south and almost a clipper type system now into the upper Great Lakes. It's that secondary low that brought that cold front in earlier this afternoon. So let's look at this as we go through time. We've got a big East Coast storm that'll take shape. Lots of rain, even severe weather down along the southeast. On the colder end of that, you've got some snow coming up through parts of Indiana, Ohio, and even some lake effect snow setting in across northwest Indiana and closer to Chicago tomorrow. We've got the cloud cover, but high pressure builds in for us as we go throughout the day tomorrow and into Tuesday. So that'll lead to a little more sunshine as we head into Tuesday afternoon. 25, that's where we head for the overnight tonight. But again, those wind chills, they are going to be down in the teens up to 33 for tomorrow afternoon. That's it. That's about uh, five to eight degrees below where we should be. 35 on Tuesday. We're back into the 40s on Wednesday. Just a slight chance for a flurry or two come Thursday. But Alexis, we warm those temperatures for the first weekend of December back into the 40s. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with David Greenberg. The Bears and Packers don't play until tonight, so let's start in Jacksonville and see how James Robinson and the Jags did against the, the Browns this afternoon. That was the fourth and one play there. 
This one is Mike Glennon to Tyler Eifert on, with the score. That makes it 19-17. to Two-point conversion was no good. Browns get another score, so Jags are trailing eight just outside the red zone. Handoff to Robinson, and he just pushed the pile in for the score. The two-point was no good, but Robinson finished with 22 carries for 128 yards and the score. He also had five catches for 31 yards. I don't know who I have to talk to, but I'll do what I can to make sure Robinson gets some Rookie of the Year votes that he definitely deserves. The Jaguars fall to the Browns 27-25. to NFC North Minnesota Vikings were at home today facing the Carolina Panthers. First quarter, Kirk Cousins takes the snap, finds rookie Justin Jefferson on the slant for the score. Vikings up 7-0 early. Start of the third, Cousins drops back again. This time pressure comes and he loses the ball. Picked up by Carolina and taken all the way back for the score. Panthers lead now 14-10. This one went back and forth all game long, under a minute. Vikings need the touchdown. Cousins to Chad Beebe, the former NIU Husky, makes the game-winning touchdown grab. The Panthers took it down, down the field, but with the field goal was no good. The Vikings hang on for the 28-27 win. Tonight, the Bears and Packers will square off in prime time on Sunday night football. Aaron Rodgers is playing like an MVP candidate so far with a league-leading 115.8 QB rating. But all eyes will be on Mitchell Trubisky making his return as the Bears starter while Nick Foles recovers from a hip injury. Bears fans have been back and forth on Trubisky pretty much his entire time in Chicago, wanting him gone and now seemingly asking for his return. Well, tonight their wishes come true. He discussed his reaction to Bears, how Bears fans feel about him with the media. I've been here for four years. Um, uh, I'm still trying to figure it out. So, <laughs> But I got nothing uh, but love in my heart for the fans of the city of Chicago. And um, I think if, if, if on offense, defense, and special teams, if we can match the fans' passion for this team, then I think that's how you go out there and play with a lot of will and passion. We saw James Robinson in his big day. How about another local star athlete, Jordan King from Hananiga, playing in the first game of her sophomore season at Marquette today, and she balled out. She went off for 20 points on 8 of 16 shooting with 5 assists and 3 rebounds in 35 minutes. We love it when we see some of our hometown athletes doing big things. That's it for sports. We'll be right back. Wintry weather stays to our east the next couple of days, but it'll be a lot cooler. More on that at 10.